Good afternoon, I'm Frank Fitzpatrick and I'm presenting my proposal for a study of the benefits of magnesium to reduce the progression of coronary artery disease. Magnesium may be the hidden gem for our heart. Heart disease is the leading, leading cause of death in adults in the United States. One in four deaths in America are due to heart disease. While there are many forms of heart disease, the most common is coronary artery disease. This is where plaque forms on the walls of the arteries. As the disease progresses, the plaque grows and calcifies. This stiffens the artery and can block the blood flow. Also, the plaques can burst, which can lead to a blood clot blocking the flow to the heart. This is a heart attack. Magnesium is one of the major minerals in our body and it is used in many functions. It is involved in over 300 enzymatic reactions. An adult body has 20 to 28 grams of magnesium. Most of this is associated in the bone. Adults need 300 to 400 milligrams per day of magnesium. Over the past century, we consume less and less magnesium. Food refining strips much of the magnesium from our grains. Our soil is depleted of magnesium. Our public water does not contain enough magnesium, like well and spring water, which usually are high in magnesium. There are many critical processes that we need magnesium for, and we are currently consuming only about 200 milligrams per day, about half the recommended daily allowance. Many large epidemiological studies show an inverse association between magnesium levels and heart disease. Magnesium deficiency is associated with artery endothelial dysfunction, which many believe is the beginning of the coronary artery disease. Epidemiological studies do not show cause, just an association. This could be due to many factors. Magnesium-rich foods are often heart-healthy foods, which have other cardioprotective properties. That could be the reason for these findings. This highlights the need for a large, randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial of magnesium to reduce coronary artery plaque. This proposed study will address the gap in the existing research. The research question. Can magnesium therapy slow the rate of coronary artery calcification in men 50 to 60 years old with mild coronary artery disease? This proposal will strive to answer this question. There have been many epidemiological studies which show the link between low magnesium and coronary artery disease. One early study was in 1998 which revealed a strong association between higher dietary and serum magnesium to a lower incidence of coronary artery disease. In the Framington Heart Study, researchers revealed 22% less coronary artery calcification with an increase of just 50 milligrams per day of magnesium in the diet over a 10-year period. Again, these epidemiological studies show association but not causation. People of high magnesium levels eat heart-healthy foods, which are also high in magnesium like green leafy vegetables, nuts, spice, seafoods. The cardioprotective properties of these foods could be the reason for the lower heart disease or just a bias towards a better diet in people with high magnesium levels could be the cause of these results. One very interesting study used Mendelian randomization. Researchers tested people with a genetic predisposition to higher serum magnesium levels. They too had less heart disease. This removes the diet and lifestyle choices as the reason for the higher magnesium levels. Why should magnesium be associated with more heart disease? Studies have shown low magnesium is associated with many of the markers for heart disease. This list is a cardiologist's worst nightmare. Low magnesium is associated with an increase in triglycerides, total cholesterol, very low density lipoproteins, and low-density lipoproteins. It also shows a decrease in high-density lipoproteins. Also, low magnesium has been associated with high APOAB and low APOAA1. This ratio is a strong indicator of cardiovascular disease. Many of the treatments for cardiovascular disease upset the electrolyte balance, like diuretics for high blood pressure. These lower the patient's magnesium level possibly causing more issues with these patients if the magnesium levels are not corrected. You need a way to measure the disease progression. 
In the last three decades, CT scans have become have been used to image arterial plaque. The scan measures the size and density of slices of the plaque. Then these slices are all combined to create an Agatston score. This is a precise way to quantify arterial plaque. It has now become a very common, inexpensive test for cardiologists. A second way to measure the disease progression is with blood pressure. As the artery stiffens, the blood pressure increases. This measurement is for the whole body, not just the coronary arteries. It is an easy and inexpensive, but not nearly as precise as calcium, cardiac calcium scoring from a CT scan. There are only two practical ways to measure magnesium, with blood tests and with urine tests. Only 1% of magnesium is in the blood, and the skeletal store of magnesium is large. The serum magnesium level does not fluctuate because the body works to tightly control this using the large skeletal store as a buffer. In a study, researchers found that magnesium supplementation for 12 weeks made no significant difference in serum magnesium levels. It took 24 weeks for a significant difference to be measurable. This highlights the difficulty of measuring serum magnesium as a marker. This study will be in partnership with Johns Hopkins Center in Baltimore, Maryland. Information will be disseminated about the study in the center with details and contact information. The free CT scanning and cardiac calcium scoring will be highlighted. 650 males aged 50 to 60 who meet the criteria will be needed. The criteria is an Gatston store of 100 to 1, 110 of 10 to 100. This indicates mild coronary artery disease. The study will start with healthy people who have the early stages of coronary artery disease but are not high risk. To minimize the risk, we will exclude unstable angina, congestive heart failure higher than the New York Heart Association's functional class 1, chronic diarrhea, renal failure with a serum creatine above 0.3 milligrams per deciliter, acute myocardial infarction in the past, hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, type 1 diabetes, vascular disease, a history of drug and alcohol abuse, chronic liver disease, a refusal to sign the informed consent. A G-powered a priori calculation was performed using an improvement in mean CACS of 17.8% and a standard deviation of 112 to calculate a sample size of 518 for a statistically significant result. Allowing for 25% fallout, we will need 650 people. This study is a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled three-year trial. We will use a computer program to randomly select participants for either the magnesium or a placebo. Three capsules a day, one after breakfast, lunch, and dinner, each will be 122.6 milligrams of magnesium citrate for a daily dose of 368 milligrams. Magnesium citrate was chosen due to its higher bioavailability than other magnesium formulations. Subjects will be delivered 21 pill blister packs, which are coded. This will keep both participants and researchers blind to the contents. The particip participants will be requested to return all packs, including any unused capsules. Return caps will be used to measure compliance by counting returned pills. Two main data sets are needed for this study. They are magnesium level and coronary artery disease progression for both the control and experimental groups. Magnesium level will be term determined three ways, with blood tests, urine tests, and pill count. The disease progression will be the rise of the a Gaston score over a three-year period. A secondary measure of the disease progression will be the rise in blood pressure over the three-year period. With these two main data sets, we can perform the necessary statistical analysis. The rise in CACS and the rise in blood pressure will be expressed as mean and standard deviation of the two groups. With Minitab statistical software, both the independent t-test for parametric data and the Wilcoxon test for non-parametric data will be calculated for the two groups. A p-value less than 
0, 0.05 will be considered statistically significant. Strengths and limitations. Strengths. Randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial is considered the gold standard of trials and will provide the best indication of causation. The large sample size, the long duration since coronary artery disease progression is slow and the time will allow for significant results. The methodology, methodology is proven in multiple similar studies. The limitations are also many of the strengths. The long duration will allow for many to leave the test, increasing the size of the attrition. The large sample size will be difficult to recruit and the reliance on the willingness of the participants to follow the protocol. In conclusion, coronary artery disease is a progressive condition where patients can see their coronary artery calcification score increase by 24% per year. The evidence is strong that low magnesium levels are associated with coronary artery disease. This has been shown in many epidemiological studies. Many therapies for heart disease and high blood pressure negatively affect electrolyte balance and lower magnesium levels. If the magnesium levels are not corrected, there is a risk of increasing the cardiovascular disease progression of these patients receiving these necessary treatments. An effective supplement of magnesium citrate could be used to compensate for the magnesium lowering effects of these treatments based on the findings of this proposed trial. Data from the literature indicates that the expected result of the magnesium therapy would be a 15 to 20 percent lower coronary artery calcium score in the group given the magnesium therapy. Then a safe and inexpensive treatment could be used to slow the progression of this serious disease. Thank you for listening to my proposal. Here are my references.